we need yes okay okay uh, thank you so much for being at the design for change uh, workshop uh, my name is uh, Kiran Beer Sethi and I shall be your facilitator moderator whatever it is but the first task we have to do is put everything down and everybody has to get up okay and in groups we need to have three groups so just uh, put yourselves into three groups, just random grouping. Just, just, just make three groups. One group comes here, one group can go there. Anybody. It, this is the first is a challenge. Let's see if you all are. You can do a design thinking. So, mixed groups, mixed groups. One group gets uh, balloons, one group is here. Could one group come here, please? Equal numbers, just generally equal numbers, just come here. Okay. This is your, <laughs> all right. And we're giving everyone a cello tape. Okay, you have cello tape. You have a bag of balloons. Cello tape for you. Okay, we just have to join. Okay. The task is very simple. Okay, it's a, it's a four minute task. Every group has to build the large, the tallest free-stranding structure made with the balloons. All you have is balloons and you have a sellotape and you have to build the tallest free-standing structure. All right? Very simple. So you'll have to blow the balloons, you'll have to do whatever you can, but you're creating this. I'm going to play some music and by the time the music gets over, you have to stop. Simple. Let's go!
Okay. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Can we now uh, just settle down and, and just ensure that you have a pair? Because for the rest of the workshop, you are going to be working in pairs. So if you can just ensure that you have somebody that you are going to be working with. Okay. Yeah, we need more paper and every Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, ma again, my name is Kiran Beer Sethi. Uh, I run a school in India and from that uh, is based on design thinking principles and subsequently went on to design uh, the world's largest design thinking challenge called Design for Change, in which children use a very simple design process called feel, imagine, do and share, which we call the quick fids to be able to look at change. So we have just an R, okay, and in this R I'm going to hope that I will take you through a very quick design thinking challenge uh, in which you will see the shift between designing for somebody and designing with somebody and what that and how feel, imagine, do, share would take you through that. It's gonna be very quick. Uh, I'm gonna introduce you to my co-facilitator, my husband, Geet, and whenever he whistles, Geet, please whistle. <whistles> oh, that's your cue for the next step, all right? So we are going to be um, uh, starting this particular thing. We've just done a little bit of a uh, small exercise. Uh, simple thing from this challenge that you did. Team, winning team. What, what did you go through while doing this particular uh, simple challenge? This, the making the balloons. Yes, you were the winning team. Was it a collaborative enterprise? Could you have done this by yourself? No. Okay, so it was collaborative. Any other things that we, you were using while doing this particular challenge? Were you problem solving as you were going along? Yeah? yeah? So did each one quickly take a role? Yeah. Did somebody say, I'm gonna be taking the cello tape? Somebody said, I'm gonna be blowing the balloons. No, we just did it. We just did it, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So did the young ones blow the balloons more? Uh, so did <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes? Okay. What happened in, th in this uh, group, this particular group that started very well and then it's kind of subsequently kind of went down? <laughs> what happened in this particular group? So they did not know which problem they were solving. Correct? So the team that joined in didn't quite know what problem they were uh, solving. Right. Okay, so, okay, so this is just a, a very small sort of a quick um, exercise on what is it that bothers us and what do we go around trying to solve? Um, so a, a simple thing which I started, because I'm gonna take it uh, a little faster, but what bothers you and what would you like to see changed? I'll just give you a small starter. Some say the world is not getting safer for any age. How many of you would say this is something that bothers you and you would like to see changed? Yeah? Uh, there's one. Most of us are bystanders. We see things happening, but we don't go out there and say we can make the difference. Because typically, the larger the group, the more likely it is that somebody will say somebody else will take the charge. Anything else that if in, if in the group you can identify one thing that all of you feel bothers that particular group. So you'll have to actually talk to each other. We're not gonna be talking to me, we're gonna talk to each other a lot. Okay, so quickly, three minutes, one thing that you all feel bothers you and you would like to see changed. Three minutes. No, as, as a group. Three minutes.
You'll need to vote for the one that you as a group would like to share. You got 30 seconds. Okay, again, very interesting conversations. So I am hoping that every time we do a little bit, you'll start realizing the typical things that we often get into. We love talking. Okay, so the conversations can go on, one can take the lead, we can have a lot of stories to talk about that one thing, hijack the others, and very often we fall into the same trap of not being able to identify what really bothers us. So from this simple voting exercise, which is a very powerful way, I mean, especially with kids, to be able to then vote for the one most compelling thing that takes uh, center stage is uh, an often a good way to go ahead. So what was your most uh, pressing idea that bothered you all? We said that there's a lack of collaboration to solve big problems, which leads to them getting worse. There's an aha here. Same? Lack of collaboration? Yeah, it's a lack of Okay, so a lot of minds, but no heart. Okay, so a lot of collab. What about group? Lack of collaboration here. <laughs> what about you, ma'am? been solving a lot of problems and typically these 16 different causes are what are bothering our kids as you can see it's all right from education to environment food and nutrition health and hygiene inclusion infrastructure old age homes orphanages poverty social issues traffic problems value education water management cleanliness etc and uh, and the thing Design for Change was able to kind of put out there was, rather than saying there was one thing that needed uh, your attention, it was whatever you felt strongly about, and that was what would need your attention. So not tomorrow, but today your ideas mattered. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a little, let's be the change. Yes. Environment and education. They're the most visible, 
the ones that they can see the most. Uh, what was I, but I must tell you some, uh, the data that also revealed something very interesting. It said bullying was one of the most center point issues that bothered our children. And I was sharing in my talk earlier, bullying in the bathrooms of the schools, bullying in the corridors of the school, and bullying in the uh, buses of the school. So those were the three places that children felt uh, bothered them the most. And in fact, a lot of that data basically means that school buildings have to be redesigned because typically bathroom blocks are put at the edge of a of school building, often badly lit, and that's when the likelihood of um, uh, bullying goes up. So a lot of interesting data is emerging from Design for Change. Okay, so we're gonna dive right in. You have to make pairs, just pair up with an A and a B, and you have to design, that means illustrate, an ideal wallet or purse for your partner. For this, you are given three minutes. Go. You have to illustrate, right? There is paper, there is pencil, just illustrate. Remember, quick. First, just illustrate, yeah? So you've got your uh, paper pen for your partner. Yes, yes. Get a partner. Could you get a partner or? Okay. For each other. No, just illustrate. Just just illustrate. Okay. Quick. Yes, for each other. So you have to design for him, he has to design for you. Remember, you have to keep the time. Start illustrating. Don't talk, show. Start drawing, start drawing. <laughs> too much talk, too much talk. You have to make one for her too, yeah? Get your illustrations happening. Okay, just call that design A. And now, you have to dig deeper. You have to interview a partner for five minutes each. Remember these things. You have to understand their choices, 
Choices reveal us to uh, under, uh, help us identify needs. Understanding experience, stories, what is the feelings, the connections to the idea allows us to innovate. For this, I'm giving you a very simple 360 degree tool. This is a fantastic tool to be used no matter any time you want to uh, solve economic crisis, etc. use a 360 degree tool. Facts, preferences, form, function, and relationships. You have five minutes each to go through this. Physical, what is the physical dimensions? The cost, does the person like a branded um, uh, this thing? When was the last one bought? Who, what is the sentimental value to this particular thing? How often do you buy? Uh, it will reveal a lot about the person's behaviors that allow you to innovate. And just the choices, remember, you are not designing to solve just the need. Designers take you to innovate. And these are simple. It's a very simple tool that allow you to do this. So for instance, in relationships, what does your partner have in their bag that you don't? Good insight. There was a friend of mine who used to always carry newspaper because he used to eat gum. And he needed paper to always roll the gum in and throw it out. I would never carry that. Okay, what would he or she hate to lose? So where do they put that? Uh, what gets removed or added into the bag every day? I had a friend of mine who would take his purse and throw it and never wasn't able to find the purse again. So what would you do in terms of those ideas? How is a bag personalized? Do they put little keychains? Do they add little mementos? Is there a little, or is it just a plain black bag? Okay, so what would that be? Is the bag a reflection of their personality? Is it trendy? I love bling. Okay, so everything in my, uh, this thing has to have a little bit of bling in it to kind of satisfy my kind of need. In function, what is the main use? Is the bag used multi-purpose? There's several things. If a mother, if the bag is for a young mother, would she be using pockets that have diapers in it? Okay, so understand the need. Uh, where and when do they use it? What is stored when, when it's not in use? How is it carried? All right, so you have five minutes to ask. Dig deeper, get the stories, each. Each. So you have 10 minutes starting now. Start getting the insights, writing it down, because then you'll have to redesign.
other person, the other, please shift. Again, get the stories. We're getting some really interesting stories about brand and color and style. Okay, now's the time for you to do this. 
You've got the insights, you've got the stories, you've got people who like, say, the softness and the material and the size, and they don't like the sentimental value to a bag. You now have to redesign with these insights the bag. Okay, so use those insights, those specific quirks that makes the behavior pattern change. Remember, choice helps us identify only the need. Behaviors of the partner allows you to, allows you to innovate. So keep that in mind. Somebody who works very hard, somebody who likes soft stuff, somebody who likes fashion, uh, statement piece. So now redesign and you have only four minutes. Let's go.
Have you all have the, the second? What we'd like to do is this. Create the prototype, okay? You have material, you have scissors. You need to understand how to make. In the do phase, a lot of what your assumptions are actually get busted, all right? So you got 10 minutes. Keep in mind the size. There is paper, there is cello tape, there is scissors. There are things you can stick on it. 10 minutes, let's go.
walked in and I'm like, Okay, you've got your prototypes in front of you. A good idea is to be able to look at uh, the first one and the second one and just share it quickly. We've got actually not 10 minutes, but two minutes to share it with your partner to see whether it satisfied the brief. All right, so does this particular design address the need and have you innovated with it? Does your partner look at it and say, oh my God, he knows me so well or she knows me so well? Okay, we've got a pair that's going to talk to us about uh, the shift in their designs. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Tammy. Tammy and Cindy. Uh, we're going to look at a little bit about them. Yes. So, um, Tammy made it very easy for me to do this um, because... 
We started with, she advised me right off the bat that she wanted a clutch, so um, that simplified things quite a bit. So the first, um, the first drawing was this clutch here. And, um, and then as we, when we went through the interview, um, I found out that she likes bright colors, but she also likes earth tones, and she wanted a shoulder strap for her clutch. <laughs> and she, for her evening, it was just something that would work a lot better for her. So the, um, the, the change came from going the, the initial clutch with the shoulder strap and then to the reverse out that she can use as a, um, for her earth tones, her earth tone evenings, because she likes to match her outfits. <laughs> Okay, so for Cindy, she carries large bags. So the first bag I drew, it was just a riff off of her shirt where I broke up the word beloved to be loved. And then I looked at her and then talking to her, I was like, this bag is too structured. She looks like somebody who's a little bit more free form and free flowing. So then we discussed that she liked, this is supposed to be a duffel bag, sorry. Um, <laughs> so it's supposed to be kind of crumply. It's a prototype, right? So you can imagine it larger. And she's vegetarian, so we made the bag 100% vegan, and it's also biodegradable. <laughs> and then what you're seeing here are hand-dyed boutique artwork from women who, and this is how they sustain themselves. And there's some secret pockets on the inside of the bag for, I don't know if you can see this, for credit cards and for phones. And she wanted a short strap, so I tried to give her that. <laughs> so that's I love it. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to kind of shift to this thing. You know, uh, typically when we design, and we de when we design for somebody, we, we work through a lot of assumptions. Some of the assumptions that have come up in my previous workshops are this. Our own experiences flavor the way we design for somebody else. It happens all the time in the teaching profession. I was taught this way, this is how I will teach. I was a mother this way, I will be a mother this way. So a lot of the assumptions flavor the way we go about things. The other is comfort and familiarity. Uh, some of the other uh, assumptions that have often come up are uh, assumptions about the other person. Stereotypes. I remember there was a workshop where a, boy, uh, a gentleman designed this rather blingy, fun-looking, shaped, heart-shaped uh, uh, um, uh, bag for his, uh, for his partner, and she was anything but that. You know, so he kind of said, oh my God, but I thought she's a girl and she likes heart-shaped things. And, and that was the assumption of the design. Gender becomes a huge factor in our design. Uh, similarly is overstuffing the brief. You know, we want to have everything in the bag. We want to make it this, this kind of, uh, uh, what you call, uh, you know what, how do you give children, uh, 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 you give these, these bottled flavored, food when the child cannot actually digest uh, in the stuff, you put it all together and then you, fl uh, you give them uh, that. That's really what happens in typical design uh, stories. So what does this reveal? Couple of things. One, it reveals our own worldview. It reveals and highlights our actions, our inactions. It helps us explore our biases. Very often I've had people say, oh my God, I didn't think I thought like this. And that's a very important thing that comes out with design. Awareness of this means that we can avoid jumping to the f first single answer. I'll give you a small example about a case study that happened with children. Uh, they, uh, they did a cartography exercise and they realized that the bathrooms were stinking, okay? And, and it's very smelly. So the first solution was we must clean it every Friday. Cleaning it every Friday did not solve the problem. It doesn't solve the problem. That's their first immediate answer. So they had to go back and actually observe who who uses it, which grade uses it, after which uh, grade the bathrooms are the smelliest, whether there is enough cleaning material, whether, um, uh, you know, wh whether the timetable had to be uh, uh, shifted. So when they actually looked at behaviors of the people using the bathroom, the shift happened. In fact, they realized they had to do three things. They had to understand that the best case scenario they defined was, is the bathroom the first thing that people bring their visitors to see? moment they defined a best case scenario that the bathroom is so clean that the visitors come to see our bathroom first. And that helped looking at the design solution. So imagine really is that you use metaphors, you compare it with ideas that you're already familiar with. And then your do means they had to do workshop with the children. They had to ensure that the cleaning staff had the right equipment. They had to restructure the timetable because the grade six and the grade seven went to the bathroom after the sport period and most of the boys put um, 
spray. And, and the spray was creating this huge amount of mess in the bathroom. So several ideas, whether it's boldest, whether it's quickest, whether it's long lasting. And you need to look at your ideas around these lenses. And the third beautiful thing about design thinking, it's an optimistic idea of life. You stop blaming, you stop saying that it's the government's job, it's somebody else's, it's the way it's always been. And you start taking responsibility for, for your own actions. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, sh show you this. This is um, one story that um, I'm going to share with you about that came to us from, from a small little village school in India. And I'm going to wrap it up by saying how design thinking helps. This story is not large because of the numbers of people that are uh, uh, sort of impacted. It's very significant because it tells us about the optimistic view of human nature. It's a small story about a little boy who has polio and he couldn't attend school. So the real feel was that disability impacted that child's attendance to school. The imagine, the children got together and imagined that right to education was a right for everybody. And the do was a strategy to get this little boy to school every day. And the reason I share this is it's compelling because it tells us that if a little child in a village school in India can make change happen, then everybody else can. Can we just have the sound? to just kind of sum it all, it's not about design to be different. It's designed to make a difference. And that happens when you don't design for the user, but with the user. And uh, we've been using this feel, imagine, do, share, simple four-step process, and we've been letting it go around the world, and we're getting stunned by the kind of stories that are coming back to us. Um, We've actually got into publishing in a big way. We've, uh, comic book, the, the biggest comic book industry in India is making comic books from uh, these stories of you know, children being the real heroes. We're actually in the process of designing the very first design thinking textbook 
because most schools resist anything else. So we thought if we can design a kind of a textbook or, or a curriculum to go back into school, especially eighth grade, that's when uh, we can actually infest or infect, I like to say, with ev everybody with the I can uh, bug. So what you got was a little taste of that, that when you design for, uh, you can only design when you design with. And design actually creates culture. Uh, culture shapes values, and values determine the future. So thank you very much. Um, I hope it was um, interactive and fun. And uh, anybody in the education space, please go on to Design for Change. If you're working with children, please tell them to take part in Design for Change. If you have money, please give me. And all of that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>